Hi everyone, welcome to Knoll Baptist Church. Thank you for joining us for our first service. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for, for your love and for your beauty and for your wonder. And may we be guided by you every day and learn more about you every day. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. There's a sweet, sweet spirit in this place, and I know that it's the spirit of the Lord. There are sweet expressions on each face, and I know that it's the presence of the Lord. Sweet Holy Spirit, sweet heavenly dove, stay right here with us, filling us with your love. And all these blessings we lift our hearts in praise. Without a doubt, we'll know that we have been revived when we shall leave this place. Heavenly Father, we again thank you for your beauty and your wonder. And may we please be close to you every day. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. We have a bad habit. You've heard the phrase, I've been so busy. Well, we're going to talk about that today. As we look at a two, we're going to be looking at the next couple of messages over a couple of different texts because I think it's, a, well, not I, uh, the Lord has shows us that maybe we are going about things just a little bit off. And I know I have no right to say anything because me, I do plenty of stuff wrong. But the Word of God does tell us some things I think we all need to know. And as we look at Luke chapter 6, Luke chapter 6, we start in verse number 46. Luke chapter 6, 46. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and not do what I tell you? Everyone who comes to me and hears my words and does them, I will show you what he is like. He is like a man building a house who dug deep and laid the foundation on the rock. And when a flood arose and stream broke against that house and could not shake it because it was him. Which could not shake it because it had been well built. But the one who hears and does not do that, do them, is like a man who built a house on the ground without a foundation. When the stream broke against it, immediately it fell, and the ruin of the man, a house, was great. There's another text we can look at as well. The title of our message is The Rock. Let's talk about The Rock and how it applies to all of us. Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for our very plain spoken words in your scriptures. And may we look in the mirror and ask ourselves, are we paying attention to what you're saying? It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now, I am always fascinated by how God deals with you and me. That first phrase is pretty beautiful, I think. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and not do what I tell you? <laughs> Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and not do it? Isn't that just typical of me and you and everybody else? We say, oh, Lord, you're wonderful. We call on the Lord when we need something, but we just ignore what he says. And friends, I do it. We all do it because we're stubborn. Yes, I am stubborn. I like to do things my way. Now, when God, whenever the Word of God says this, what it tells me is God has a message for all of us. And that message is that we need to hold on to the rock. 
The rock is Jesus Christ, and the rock is the Word of God. Now, you might suggest to me, what is leading me down this pathway? Partly because I do feel God wants us to go down this pathway, because I think it's a very, I think God is showing us it's a very important, uh, it's very important for us to understand it. But I, I'm going to give you a personal experience that I had that really stimulated this whole experience. I was at a Walmart here. And I know a friend of mine who lives near that Walmart. And I was thinking, you know what? I'm here, so why not call him up and say, hey, is it okay if I stop by? That was kind of a rule our dad gave, even though I broke it a lot when I was getting out of town, when I got out of the house. But dad had the rule, call before you come. I, I told you the story about visiting our aunt and uncle, mom and dad kind of. Went back and forth because mom used to visit grand, her aunt on the summertime. She had a very close relationship. And dad was like, no, you call ahead of time. So I kind of compromised and we stopped by the house. And mom would run in and find out who was okay. And then she would leave and say yes or no. But anyway, call before you come. That was dad's way. Me, drop in. Why not? <laughs> it didn't go over so well when I did that. But anyway, so here I am calling this person up. And what happens? You can imagine. Voicemail. Isn't that something that we get 90% of the time? And I don't know if you've noticed this, but more and more, you're not getting the person. You're getting a, you have reached 222-333-1111, or whatever number it is. Leave a message. It's like there is no human on the other end. It's just a computer talking to you. That seems to be the trend. Well, anyway, I leave this message, and no, there was no computer. It was his voice saying, yes, and he called. I, I, it wasn't him, but it was his voice. So I left him and said, hey, I happen to be just five minutes away from your house. Do you mind if I come by? I'll be here for two more minutes. Did I get a call back? Mm, no. <laughs> now, I've called probably two or three times, and one or three have gotten a response by text. Not a call back, text. Now, this stirred me up. Because I know what they're going to tell me the moment I make contact with this person. I know what they're going to say. And I think you know what they're going to say. We've been so busy. Isn't that a phrase that you hear more than you hear, hi, good morning, how are you? I've been so busy. And it got me to realizing that we are swimming upstream. We are climbing the rocks that we can't climb. And it's because we're caught up in the same thing that everybody else is. We, I know it's going to sound harsh, but we, if you want to be blunt about it, we worship our schedules more than we worship anything else. And it dawned on me that, wait a sec, maybe we've got everything upside down. And as you hear, it says right here, it says, remember, he says, um, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and not do what I tell you? Now, I know a lot of believers are going, but Lord, I do what God says. Do you? I, yeah, I, I, I am, I, I, I'm going to church, and that when I get a chance, I read the Bible, and, and when I get a chance, I pray, and when I get a chance, maybe I'll, I'll share the gospel somewhere, maybe, when I get a chance. It's kind of like say, I will try. Ever met the person I will try? You know how you know the person I'm talking about. Yeah, I'll, I'll try to come by your house. Or yeah, I'll I'll, I'll try to stop by the park. That's the key word. I will try. See, that person has just won the Emmy Award for being the best friend in town. The Emmy Award means that you get an award for saying something that you're really not going to do. I will try. I will try to come. As long as you say, I will try. I had someone do that with a book I wrote. You write, you read my book, write a review, I'll write your book and read a review. I wrote a read their book and wrote a review. They never read my book. And now my new book has come out. It's called, by the way, it's called uh, The Bottom Floor. It's a science fiction. It's on Amazon. They went, I, I um, wrote the book and they said, oh, I'm looking forward to reading it. I had another friend of mine say, when, I, when we had a remembrance from my mom, I said, I wrote a book about it. I'm going to write a book about it. I book about it. And said, I'm looking forward to reading it. They never did. See, but they said, I will try. I'm going to. And because they said it, they're different. Aren't they nice people? No. 
They're not. They're rude, they're phony, and they're fake. You get it done is what you're good. I'm sorry. I know it sounds mean, but don't say you're going to do something. Well, we'll we'll uh, we'll try to pray, or or or, or we'll try to give, or I, I plan to get sometime soon. We always say we're, we're when I get a chance to. And God says you're not listening to me. You're not paying attention to what my word says. He says this is what he says in his word. He says, he says, um, let's go. He says, everyone who comes to me. And here's my words, and does them, I will show you what he's like. He is like a man building a house who dug deep and laid the foundation on the rock. And when the flood arose, the stream broke again, that house and could not, that could not shake it because it had been well built. They couldn't shake the house even when the flood came because it was well built. That rock solid foundation stood firm. Even when the onslaught of that flood came, it stood firm because it was built on the rock. And God is saying to us, if you're listening to my word, do it. If you hear what my word says, do it. And you if you do it, you're like built on the rock. And your house is going to stand. If you follow the word of God, if you let the word of God be your truth and guide, then you will stand. But how do you get there? That's the key. How do you get there? You can say all you want. I plan to go to church. I plan to read the Bible. I plan to pray. I plan to. I will eventually get done. I will read that book. I will stop. I'll try. You can say it all you want. You've got to do it. And how do you do it? Are you are you ready for a shocker? How do you do it? Are you ready? You do it by doing it. And you're like, huh? Yeah. You just get it done. You see, what we've got is we are allowing the schedule to chase us. I've got to be here by four, and i got to be there, and i got to take the kid here, and i got to do that. We are literally worshiping the schedule instead of foundation of the rock. We say, well, I'll eventually pray. Don't worry. And, and oh, bang, hey, if we get stuck, and it's a terrible storm out, guess what? There's everybody's going to be like, my Lord, 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 help us. Oh, yeah. Or if we trip and fall and our legs hurting, oh, we're going to cry out to God big time. But if we are just going about our regular stuff, do you think we're going to have time to pray? Of course, we're busy. That same phrase, we're busy. What happened to the Word of God? We'll, 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 we'll get to it. Don't worry. We, we're going to get it done. Are you? Yeah, we, are. we promise we will. Just like we'll try to do this and we'll try to do that. But the problem is we're not doing it. We're chasing the schedule instead. And God says, look, you're the one that's coming up with your, you're the one, you're having your own problems because you're not focusing on the word. Of, you're not building your house on the rock. You're building your house self on the weather forecast. You're worried about I and I gotta shut the clothes, I gotta get everything ready, and the weather's coming in. I gotta run around the place because I gotta make sure everything's right. Well, we, aren't you building on the rock? Well, we're not building the rock, we're building on something else because we, we're, 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 we're already scared. Why? Well, we're not building on the rock. We, we didn't build on the rock, we built on something. Well, we didn't you build on the rock? Well, we, we, we got busy. We got busy. See, how do you do it? Remember I said, I said earlier, you just do it? Well, here's how you do it. And it's going to blow your mind. You sit down and you pray and read the Bible. That's what you do. And you do it every day. You see, 
the major reason, one of the big reasons, and don't get me wrong, folks, there's always going to be problems, there's always going to be trials and tribulations, we're going to be dealing with them all our life. Lost person, saved person, going to be dealing with them all our life. But the Christian has God on their side, especially, yeah, and God's going to be always there for you, and he saves us out of so many messes and pathetic. But the fact is this, if you sit back and sit down and say, you know, we are going to be in the Word, and we're going to pray, and we're going to pray as a family, we're going to pray as a husband and wife. We are going to pray as an individual. We are going to study that word. We're going to be solid on the rock. Because that is what's going to guide us through this mess. How many people have you talked to that said, I'm on my way to camp with the kids. I'm on my way to this for the airport. I'm going, going there. I'm going here. I'm going there. How many people? Now, here's a, here's a tricky thing. You're really not supposed to write about praying. You're really not. God says, do your thoughts. But how many people have you heard say, I can't do it, I have two hours of prayer time right now? Now, you shouldn't be saying that. Just to let you know, don't go telling your friend, I'm praying for two hours a day. Don't do that, please. If you're going to pray, you need to pray. If you're going to read the Bible, you need to read the Bible. Do it, but don't tell anybody. That's the bottom line. Don't say a word. You go into your closet and you pray. That model prayer, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, that is your guide in prayer. You're sitting down and you remember those words and say, okay, God, help me to pray properly so I can seek your face and get to know you. You do it in your closet, but you do it, and you do it daily. You make sure you're in the Word daily, and you bring your wife together with you, and your husband together with you, and you pray daily, and you're in that Word. Now, how, is it better to do it in the morning? I think it's better to do it in the morning, but whatever time of day that you are, your brain turns on, and you can get everybody together, you do it. I actually knew a, I met a young lady, 15-year-old girl, when I lived in Kansas, oh, so many years ago. I was getting my driver's license when I was living in Kansas. And uh, this is a girl I was sitting next to who was a believer, and she was 15, and she said she prayed at night, read the Bible at night. Now, I, she, I think she was Methodist. There's a lot of Methodists in Kansas at the time. And... Uh, I was, I don't think, I don't know if I was a believer yet. I got to become a believer eventually in Kansas, but I wasn't, I don't know if I was a believer yet, but she was a believer and talks about praying and reading the Bible at night. But you got to do that, folks. you got to bring in the kids, and you got to sit down. We're going to sit down and pray. And I know people say, but the kids are going to fall asleep. So what? Oh, the kids are hard to handle. Yes, so what? Well, you don't understand what it's like to have kids. I, you're right. I don't know what it's like to have kids. But it doesn't change the command of God. It doesn't change that God has commanded us to know his word. Get people together and pray. And take that schedule uh, you have so much trouble with. You get together and pray. You read the Bible. You read a text. You study it together. And then what do you do? You go ahead and look over. We got, Lord, we got 15 things we're trying to get done this week. And you list them all. List all the 15. And you say, Lord, help. Help us. We don't want to be caught up in the swamp, in the swirlwind. We don't, we don't like using the excuse we're busy. Don't you get tired of hearing, hearing that phrase, we're so busy? Don't you get tired of it? I do. And you know that when you talk to somebody, it's now part of our lexicon. How are you doing today? Been so busy. I remember one time I called a guy up on the phone. Because I actually I tried to reach him. Didn't respond. But I tried him again. He answers. He sounded a little perturbed that I tried the second time. I said, hi, how are you doing? His response was, Busy. Oh. In other words, I don't want to talk to you unless I want to talk to you. Oh, yeah, I've heard that busy. We're so busy. We're, we're, we're busy. Well, maybe your busy is upside down. Maybe you should be in the Word of God and studying the Word of God and in the Scriptures. Now, remember, this is not about browbeating anybody. You don't go up to Joe and say, Joe, did you get up this morning and pray for an hour? You don't do that. Or, hey, Larry, 
You, you've been swamped. Oh, you're swamped. You must not be praying. You don't do that either. You don't look to some, talk to somebody and ask them, how you've been doing. Oh, I've been so busy. Don't say to them, oh, you're not praying enough, are you? You, you don't. No, no. You don't go there. The point I'm trying to make is I do believe very strongly that there are so many Christians that are swimming upstream. They just are barely keeping above float. And that's because they are probably very well-meaning people. They are probably believers that really love God, but they've allowed the, the tide to take them away. Somehow. It's easy. You see something you like, you want to do it, and you say, let's say you want to build a, 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 a garage in the backyard. You're, you've determined to build that garage. And what do you do? You're building that garage and you're fixing it up and you're getting it all excited about it already. And yet you're so close and you know the storm's going to come in and you don't want to have that storm come in before you get it done. But it's 11 o'clock the night before and you've got church the next morning. If you only had three more hours, you think, and you're caught up in that project, what happens? Well, either either you go to bed at 11 because your wife got what you might be, and you say, oh, just three hours, and you find yourself working all day on Sunday. That means you miss, miss church. But you got that project done because you wanted to beat the weather. You see, we rationalize everything and say, God understands. He, friends, he, he understands everything. Our Lord understands. He understands. He understands why Adam and Eve blew it. He gets it. He understands why Adam and Eve messed up. But it doesn't change the fact they messed up and paid the price. And what I'm saying, what God is saying here is very simple. The work you want to be founded on the rock. Our priority is the rock. And just let's read what he says again. He says, Everyone who comes to me, he says, Isn't this funny? Why do you call me Lord, Lord? And not do what I tell you. Why do you call me Lord? Lord, you don't read my Bible. Why do you call me Lord? And you don't pray like you should. Why is it? Why? And he said, watch what happens. He says, everyone who comes to me and hears my words and does them, I will show you what he is like. He is like a man building a house who dug deep and laid the foundation on the rock. And when they flood arose, the stream broke against the house and could not shake it. That's because it had been well built. Friends, we're going to get hit by those floods. Every human on earth gets hit by the flood. Some kind of flood. The question is, are we built on the rock? Are we solid on the rock? And the way we do that, how do you get to the rock? You get to the rock by making it a priority. You don't allow yourself to get caught up in gotta send the kids here. Gotta send now, is it wrong to send the kids here? And it never said it was. If you heard me say that, then you were not listening to the message. I never said that. What I'm saying is the first priority is not the camps. The first priority is not that party. The first priority is not that event. The first priority is the word. God. And I will strongly suggest to you, especially if you're a busy, <laughs> here I am, busy person, that you lift up that busyness to the Lord and say, Lord, uh, uh, this is what I want to do, God. I'd like to go here. I'd like to go here. Help me. We, there is something about, I don't call it, want to call it pride or, or determination or stubbornness, but we are allow ourselves to get caught up in the idea that I have got to be there because I just have to be there. And what we should do is say, God, I'd like to be there. Can you help me? And friends, I can attest to the fact that it has happened to me that I've prayed that and God has worked stuff out. I don't know how he worked it out, but either they even the people I wanted to see maybe came to the event I was going to, and oh, we ran into each other. How he did it, but he has the ability. He's God. 
He has this amazing ability to move things around because he is the Lord. Now, does that mean that everything falls in place? Of course not. But the bottom line is, our priority needs to be the word of God. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Seek first the kingdom. He doesn't say seek the uh, event this weekend. He doesn't say uh, seek that guy, seek that girl, seek that family fellowship. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And how do we do it? By turning to the word of God, the rock, the truth, his word. The question for you and me is this. Is our priority the word of God? Is our priority reading and praying in the Bible? Is our priority as an individual, as a couple, as a family, let's get us together and study the Word. Is that our priority? That's our question. I haven't got the answer. Well, God already gave us an answer. The priority should be the Word of God. But only we know whether it's a priority in our lives. Remember, the rock. The Word of God is the answer. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your, for your love and for your mercy. We just pray right now that you'll give us the guidance we need to, to follow you and to do as you ask us to do. And may we turn to your Word all the time and seek your face all the time and follow you all the time. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. The Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There's none righteous, no, not one. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. I encourage you right now to say, Jesus, come into my heart, be my Savior, if you haven't done it yet already. If you are a Christian, remember what your priority is. The rock, the word of God. As we sing. Just at, make a decision for Jesus today. Make a decision for Jesus today. Just as I am in waiting us to rid my soul of one dark blot to thee whose blood can cleanse his spot, O Lamb of God, I come, I come. Friend, I hope you accept the Christ your Savior. If not, please just go sit and cry out, Lord, folks. Those who are Christians, remember the rock. That's our priority. Knowing him, getting to know him, following him, looking into his word, seeing his word, finding out what he says, finding out and doing what he says. That's our priority. Well, I want to thank you folks for the opportunity to be with you today. Um, I understand that the Major League Baseball season has begun, and I heard a rumor. I was remembering. I should remember where this place is. Um, there is a town. That's about to, oh yeah, there's a town, I hope I got this right, in California, called, you, heard, you may have heard of Sacramento, maybe, maybe you have, I don't know, I won't make you a joke. Um, Sacramento, California, there's an indication they might have a Major League Baseball team in the next couple of years. The athletics may be moving there, that's what I heard on the radio, I don't know, just a little trivia. Anyway, just hope you're enjoying yourself, yes, Monday is the eclipse, so please be very careful and Keep your eyes in the right place. But we pray that you are doing well and we pray that you're safe. And remember, our website is https colon backslash backslash the Knowles, K N O L O S Baptist Church dot my and y dot canva, C A N V A, C A N V A dot site backslash KBC. We are on X, Instagram. Facebook, YouTube, and TikTok. Please check us out. Before we close, let's have a word of prayer. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for a reminder that your word is the truth. May we pay attention to it every day. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you for joining us, folks. We hope you have yourself a wonderful day. God bless.